So here's a natural response of an RC circuit. This is a fun problem with a couple of neat little tricks in it. So we've got 15 volt power source, a switch that opens at T equals zero. And this is the, this left hand side is the energizing part of the circuit that uh, disconnects itself after these capacitors are energized. So a five microfarad capacitor up here in parallel with a 20 kilo ohm resistor here, and then a one microfarad capacitor in parallel with a 40 kilo ohm resistor over here. Okay, we can label these nodes. So there's node A, node B, and node C. And then there's this voltage of interest be between nodes A and C, even though C is over here, right? There's, you know, there's V0 is still between A and C, just pointing that out. And then this 20K and the five micro are in parallel with each other. Okay, and th those two are between nodes A and B, and then this this one microfarad and the 40 kilo ohm are in parallel with each other, and they're between B and C. So really what we have is a these two guys as a group are in series with these two guys as a group. And then we've got the whole system over here being energized by, um, by this... Um, This voltage source over here, so we got a 15 kilo ohm there. So we want to find we want to find v sub zero as a function of time for t greater than or equal to zero, and we want to find the percent of the energy dissipated at t equals 60 milliseconds. So this is the percent of the total system, you know energy dissipated at 60 milliseconds. So this guy, this cap here is going to get charged up with some energy and this guy's going to get charged up with some energy. Then the switch will open and this guy will discharge and this guy will discharge. And what's interesting is they'll do so independently, um, which hopefully you'll see here. So um, the first thing we want to do with these step response things, we always want to draw the circuit at multiple points in time. So the first one is at less than zero or really much, much less than zero. And um, it's helpful to line up these things vertically so you can kind of tell what's what. So I'm gonna leave the switch out. It's closed. And the there's the 20K, right? Then there's the 40K. So, this is where the current's going right now, and we can we could label that current I, and that current's going all the way around. So the caps the caps are still there, but they're behaving as if they were open circuits because we're talking about steady state um, condition here, steady state voltage, steady state current. The switch has been closed for a long time, so these guys are in steady state. So they're there, but they behave as if they're open circuits. So the V0 is still here between nodes A and node C. Oops, negative there. Mm. So um, if we need these initial voltages on these on these uh, caps here, we're going to find the in initial voltages because we have a formula for how voltages decay over time. We need the initial voltage, and then we need tau. First, we'll find the initial voltage. So if we had I, then we could figure the voltage drop across this 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 uh, this 20K resistor and across this 40K resistor. So, um, yeah, so uh, we need to find I. So the we're just going to use I equals V over R. So, um, so I... Uh, at zero minus, this is a notation just saying I before the switch opens, zero minus. It's going to be the total voltage, which is 15 ohms, over the total resistance, which is 15, 20, and 40. 
it's going to be 0 0.2 milliamps. All right, then um, we can find the voltage drop ac across this resistor, which is the same as the initial voltage across the cap because they're in parallel. And, we can, and then likewise, we can find the voltage drop across this resistor, which is the same as this uh, the voltage, the initial voltage across the cap. So, got to label these somehow. So let's let's call let's call um, this voltage here V at V five, and it's going to have this polarity plus to minus because the current's going current's going this way. So the, the voltage drop is going to be plus minus. Likewise, the voltage drop here is going to be plus minus. Let's call that V one because there's the one micro microfarad that's still there and the 5 microfarad is still there. So we got V5 and V1 and just by Ohm's law using the resistor here, right? V5 at 0 minus is going to be um, 0 0.2 times times 20. This is just IR, right? Ohm's law, it's going to be 4 volts, all right? That's the initial voltage in the cap, which is the same as the voltage across the resistor at steady state. And then the voltage in the um, V1, which is the initial voltage across the cap, which is the same as the initial voltage in the its parallel ca capacitor. So V1 at zero minus is going to be the same current, but 40 kilo ohms this time, and so that works out to be eight volts. So those are our those are our V zeros for our separate equation. So now we open, you know, we open the switch and what happens here is kind of interesting that the left hand part of the circuit is disconnected and it's only sharing one node so it's doing its own thing. It's not even a circuit at that point because it's just, it doesn't go back around to see so it's really doing nothing. And then likewise the right hand side of the circuit together is, is um, kind of in a well the way to the way to think of it is that they act independently because i have a circuit a circle right circuit the word circuit comes from circle i have a circle going around here from a to b so it's going to do something then i have another circle going from b to c around in here that the fact that they share b node doesn't affect them they act, they behave independent so a b is independent from BC circuit. So we have we have two independent circuits and the, I'm going to redraw them down here. So the first one is this this one. This is between nodes A and nodes B. This is the 5 microfarad and the 20 kilo ohm. So that's this thing up in here. All right. Then there's another circuit. Th this guy over here so I'm so now I'm drawing all of this at t t greater than zero. This other circuit between B C I'm going to turn it so that it it looks the same as this other as the other guy. Uh, this is B node and this is C node and this is the one microfarad and the forty kilo ohm resistor. So. Let's put the initial voltages that are in there. We we have um, this first guy here is the the, the V five has positive polarity at the A terminal. So there's this initial um, you know V V five at zero equals four volts. So initial four volts across here. Likewise, this guy over here, which I turned, has the has the positive at at the B terminal, and it had uh, eight. It so this was V one at zero. It had eight volts in it initially, right? So just take the time to pull these guys apart and make sure that you put the polarities right. You don't mix anything up. So if the so here's what's Interesting, like at first the, the, the current was going this way and it was generating, that's where our polarity, polarity, the V5 polarity came from, from the initial, the initial I current going through this thing. Now that we've opened the switch, the current will leave at the positive terminal. It's like the uh, capacitor is acting like a source now. So 
the current from t greater than zero is going to be in this direction. I'm just going to, you know, we're going to label it a new label here, I5. Likewise, the current here will be leaving in this direction from the positive terminal, I1. Okay, so these are two independent circuit, two independent circuits. You know, for t greater than zero, All right? So we can solve them independently, really. So this guy has an initial voltage of v, a uh, four. And this guy has an initial voltage of eight. We need the tau. So tau for for the five volt guy is it's um, tau is R C. It's R C. It's going to be five times ten to the minus six. Um, what is that? Microfarads, five microfarads and 20 kilo ohms, 10 to the positive three, 20 kilo ohms. It ends up being 0 0.1 seconds. Okay. And tau one is going to be the one microfarad times the 40 kilo ohm. It's going to be 0 0.04 seconds. All right. So, Mm. So we have we have V five now. V five is we have our formula. It's V zero e to the minus t by tau. So it's going to be in this case V zero is the four volts e to the minus um, this point one point one t by point one and flipping that around it's going to be minus ten t. And this guy the V one is going to be um, plugging into that same the same formula, but using these other numbers, it's going to be e uh, eight e to the minus um, t by 0 0.04, which is tw twenty five t. So we have an equation. We have a func um, v five as a function of time, and we have v one as a function of time. And what they're asking for is v zero as a function of time. And that's where we go back to this kind of weird thing that's happening even though this guy's behaving as an independent circuit and this guy's behaving as an independent circuit they are still connected at node b okay they do they're doing their own thing but they're sharing node b so if you took a voltmeter and and you hooked it across a and c you know you would measure the the sum of these two voltages so uh, v, v0 at t is just v5 at t plus V1 at T, right? That's kind of the weirdness. You sort of, you know, have to take it apart and then kind of put it back together again. So this guy, this guy ends up being 8 E to the minus 25 T plus 4 E to the minus 10 T for T greater, any greater than or equal to zero. So that's our answer. Okay. That's the first answer, answer A. I, I like to graph everything, and here it's kind of cool to graph them all on the same axis, and I'd like you guys to graph as well. So this is the, the three voltages. So we've, we've got one that, um, one that starts at 8 and decays down, one that starts at 4 and decays down, and, and then one that starts at 12. 8 plus 4 is 12, so we've got one at, one at, one at 4, one at 8, and one at 12. And, and these are capped, so they don't step change. So the voltage before zero will be that. And four, four e to the minus 10 t, t decays, um, decays like this. And just, you know, general shape. And then the eight, the eight t has a, has a, has a faster decay. This one, so this one decays at 10. 10 T and this one decays at 25 T. So the, the eight one, eight E to the minus 25 T is decays, decays faster like that. And then adding them together, it's hard to see exactly what the shape will be. It would be something like that approximately. Anyway, that's what they do. They all, all right. So that's the first answer. The second one, the second question is asking what is the percent total energy and dissipated at t equals 60 microseconds. So we'll do this the easy way. The easy way is just to use our 
uh, W equals one half C V squared formula, and then just solve it for different voltages because we have these voltage as a function of time equations. So this is the easy way to do these energy things. We will be doing other ones, and we have done other ones where you calculate, say, a power as a power as a function of time, and then take the integral of that. And um, those are fun, but we're not going to do that right now. So um, let's if we had the um, we had the voltages at these different times, we could get the energy at the at the core at those times, and then you know compare them. So let's do let's do the initial energy first. So the, the initial energy in the system is um, it's just call it W zero. It's going to be W one at zero plus W five at zero. Um, so we need um, so we have so we have all everything. We can just plug into our uh, one uh, W equals one half CV squared. So the one microfarad cap eight had eight volts in initial initially in it squared plus the uh, five microfarad cap had four volts in it initially squared so that works out to uh, that works out to 72 microjoules that's the initial energy then to get the energy and the energy in these caps at 60 milliseconds we need the uh, voltage at 60 milliseconds so the voltage in the first one at 0 0.060 is we use this this formula here so it's 8e to the minus 25.060 that's going to be 1.79 volts and then the voltage in the 5 microfarad cap at 0.060 is going to be, we'll use this formula here, it's going to be 4 e to the minus 10.060. So that's going to be uh, it's going to be 2.20 volts. So now we can get W in the first cap at 0.060 just using our energy formula, 1 half um, one microfarad it with at this point it has 1.79 volts squared it's going to be um, 1.59 microjoules and the energy in the 5 microfarad cap at 0 0.060 is going to be 1 half 5 times 10 to the minus 6 and it had 2.2 .2 volts at 60 mic microseconds which works out to 12.05 microjoules so the total energy at 0 0.060 is the sum of those two it's 1.59 plus 12.05 it's 13.64 microjoules so the energy the energy dissipated call it w dis is it's the initial energy w at zero minus the energy at 0 0.0 0 060 so it's 72 microjoules that's the initial energy minus this energy at it's this total energy at 60 microseconds 13.64 is so that quantity is 58.36 microjoules so it it had initially 72 microjoules and now it has 58.36 which is still kind of most of it and what is it exactly it's it's just the it's 81 percent that's the answer 81 percent of the energy is remaining because we had 72 and then now we have 58 it's about it that's exactly 81 percent 